Hello everybody, it's Stephen Daniels with DUI and Do Consultants. Um, I posted some videos yesterday of uh, some of the agency inspectors and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement Department inspector of this area, Don Surrett, um, falsifying, in my opinion, falsifying some testing uh, failure excuses. Um, so I decided to start making some educational videos for the defense attorneys and, and the uh, public out there uh, to raise a little awareness of some of the problems with the uh, alcohol testing program in the state of Florida and nationwide. Um, so the model for these educational videos is why should you watch them? Well, you can't undo what you don't know how to do. So with that being said, we're going to uh, get to this video. And uh, as you see, it's me. Today we're going to be talking about one of the HCC inspectors in Don Surratt's area uh, for the Pinellas County Sheriff's uh, Office, and her name is Cheryl Peacock. When I started doing uh, my investigation into the implied consent program in Florida, I started uncovering um, serious problems in the in the actual testing. Um, one of the problems that I realize is that there's no way to verify that these excuses they use uh, to keep a failing machine online are accurate, or reliable, or truthful. Uh, again, all this is my own opinion. Um, how I stumbled onto this was if you watched some of my videos already, you've already seen videos that I posted from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, uh, and that HC inspector down there, Mrs. Beverly Gray and then Department Inspector Don Surratt doing things that they shouldn't be doing uh, during inspections and falsifying um, test reports or failure reports. Um, so that's the difficulty um, in verifying uh, these failures that they use, the excuses they use, whether they're valid or not. Um, so without videotape, we wouldn't know. And that's a difficult thing. So today I'm going to talk to you about a law enforcement agency that doesn't have a videotape. And speaking of videotaping, um, from what I've learned over the past four years, I am now calling for nationwide mandatory videotaping of all subject breath tests and all aging inspections. It's my opinion if the state wants to proffer this evidence uh, from these machines as scientifically reliable and accurate, then we should be able to have uh, some transparency in the program and be able to verify that these excuses that they put down that allow them to uh, machine to fail and then to retest it are valid, truthful. Uh, and, and that's the problem because you just can't verify it. A lot of these, in my opinion, almost all these excuses are speculate, pure speculation. Um, so let's talk about uh, Pinellas County. Uh, the HC inspector here is Cheryl Peacock. Um, I went back and uh, anytime I look at anybody, I always go to their personal file and see what they have, any disciplinary actions. And this is what I uncovered in, in Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Peacock's file. On December 12, 2007, and this was her Pinellas County Sheriff's Office supervisor writing a, uh, her personnel report. On December uh, 12, 2007, I was informed by the FDLE Tampa Bay Regional Breath, Test and, and, uh, Breath Testing Inspector that he had an opportunity to witness BTO, which means Breath Test Operator, Peacock testifying at court proceeding. During this testimony, he noted that Peacock provided inaccurate information to the court. Oops. <laughs> I have also been informed from the state's attorney office that Peacock is uncomfortable on the stand while testifying and could benefit from additional training. What's this mean? It means that they will spoon feed her the excuses of what she's supposed to say and why these machines fail. So now you've already got evidence of her not testifying accurately. Let's get to the meat of this one. Uh, this concerns intoxilizer um, 80-001367. And let me explain something. When you do an HC inspection, again, your legislators have allowed FDA to propagate rules to keep a failing machine online. And then that's where the problem becomes. Unless there's a videotape, there's no way to verify that these excuses are valid. Uh, so that's why it's my opinion that we're keeping the failing machines online. Uh, we're unable to verify a, a uh, failure excuse, and, and these machines are kept online. Um, back in May 20th of 2009, <clears throat> on machine right here at 1367, the agency inspector Cheryl Peacock, the dates in May, she used uh, three simulators. Uh, the compliance, she said yes, but she had a testing, she had a failure on the 2 0. She had a failure on the 2 0 here. And uh, as you see, the first testing sequence is a 0 0.042, the second one is a 0 0.022, and the third one is magically with intolerance. Guys, those the tolerance for the O2 simulator, um, there's a margin of error for these machines. So when they point the 0 0.20 alcohol reference solution on there, it needs the machine needs to read it between a 0.190 and a 0.20. Uh, 
210. If it reads it outside of that, it says it's control, it's out of tolerance. Do you want to retest? Um, the machine can fail all three of those tests or just one of them, and they would still have to retest it. They're allowed to retest it. As long as they put down what they did and what they, what the, why it failed and what they did correct it. So now let's get to that. As you see, here's here's the excuse. Now, when you see these little caps right here, that's the automatically generated response to the machine. Uh, there was a failure in the 0.20. It says control outside tolerance. And then Mrs. Peacock typed in, ran analysis again. Now, when they're done with this and they hit the print button, the P button, uh, the intoxizer has two memory banks. Um, one of them contains Microsoft documents. The other one has the uh, actual data, uh, the testing data. When you hit print, all that test data is exported from the one memory bank into the second one, imported to the Microsoft documents, and then it's printed, uh, a document is actually printed out at the time of the test. Um, after that test, they were required to upload that test result and all the previous subject breath tests back to the mother computer in Tallahassee, and then they convert that and put it online into a PDF format like this. But that's not what the state gets. That's not what you get for discovery. This is what it looks like when it's uh, in the Microsoft format. Uh, it's got these little boxes on it. As you can see, let's look at the date. It's Pinellas County. Uh, the date's in May. And then over here, you can see the serial number, 1367. May 20th. Now you can see here's the testing failures right there. Same 0 0.042, 0 0.22, and then 194. Now if you look at the bottom down here, you can see, oops, I, I got to do everything reverse here. Done. Okay. As you can see, here's the testing failure where it says 2 control outside of tolerance, ran analysis. But the alarming thing is, if you notice in pink now, now it looks like someone took a typewriter and typed in there, kink and tubing going to the simulator return port. So now, here's proof that the department inspector tells these people what to say, and the courts swallow this stuff, uh, uh, that it's a believable excuse. This is this is a department field note, and again, as you can see, there is the uh, intoxilizer number. It was received July 16th. The date on it is July 14th. And there's, there's the Department Inspector's signature, Don Surrett. And look, it says, remain in evidentiary use. Okay, but the alarming thing is, he got a phone call on here. On, on July 14th, phone. H.C. Hey, Inspector, Cheryl Peacock. Now let me read what she said, what he said. Ms. Peacock reported that during her H.C. inspection on this instrument in May, in May, she received an out tolerance for the O2 uh, alcohol reference solution during the first two analyses. The cause of these results was a kink in the simulator hose. There it is in pink. Kind of ironic that here he is, Don Surrett, two months later, and all of a sudden now this appears in typewriter, an amended report. The alarming thing is, folks, that when we went, we were preparing for this client to go to trial, that this was online, and that kink in the simulator report wasn't there. It wasn't on there. And then when we went to pull this up again, now it had this kink in the similar report excuse on there. And then immediately before the trial, we go to pull it up. And if you go to the records right now, it's not there. This whole thing has disappeared. It's no longer on the website. So that's why I'm calling for nationwide mandatory testing because, in my opinion, you got BS excuses like this. You got a department inspector telling the agency, spoon feeding the agency inspector what type of excuse is going to be believable for the court. They basically left a failing machine online, in my opinion. It gets better. Now you want to go to, um, the machine has some more problems in December of that year. And if you notice now, same machine, 1367, same inspector. Now she's using five simulators. The date's uh, December 22nd. But now all of a sudden, if you look, there's a, there's a failure. There's a failure right here on the 05. Uh, the machine actually detected interferon on the 05. Uh, and then you want to go down, there's another failure on the 2 sequence. It was outside of range again, both on the first and the retest. So she winds up taking this machine offline. Now, if you notice in pink, if you notice in pink, it says interference attack. That's the machine. Now, the Mrs. Peacock types in unknown cause, ran analysis again. And then the machine types in for the O2 failure, non-compliance, and it was a control outside of tolerance. So now, here's an email. And their email is on December 23rd, and, and then the first one was from Cheryl Peacock on, on the 23rd. But basically, uh, what she says, she's explained to Don Surrett, she goes, I don't know what caused this. 
Um, I believe the problem lies in a similar, but I will await your determination. Now, again, remember, previously Don Surrett finally responded two months later and told her what to put it in. And you got to understand something, folks. When you get a DUI, you don't go to trial in 60 days. So allowing these people, the FDLE and the H inspectors, to amend reports and then these reports being proffered as evidence in trial, i got a serious problem with that. Um, Don Surratt then loads her lips and says, and this is his response, you should consider taking the malfunctioning simulator out of service and send it to Enforcement Electronics. That's a repair facility for service. So basically, uh, you know, that's a little red flag for her to say, oh, blame it on the uh, uh, simulator. And guys, and that's the problem. It's never the intoxilizer. Anytime these things fail, it's always something else. It's the simulator. It's the solution. It's the operator. It's the connecting hoses. Um, can you see my point here? Can you see why we need a videotaping of this? I mean, you can have the best machines in the world, but it doesn't matter. If you don't have integrity from the people that are conducting the tests, if you don't have transparency to verify what they're saying is truthful, then this evidence cannot be proffered in a court uh, in my opinion, as being scientifically reliable and accurate. Um, so that's enough for on, on this machine here. I've got another machine that I'm going to talk about that's in Don Surrett's area. Uh, again, for any of you defense attorneys that have uh, a client going to trial and the state's going to be uh, or list Don Surrett as an expert witness for the state, you need to contact me. Uh, I've got a ton of evidence on as far as Mr. Surrett. When he allows this stuff to happen in his area and he doesn't oversee the people underneath um, his command, uh, we got a serious problem with that, um, but I've got a ton of information as far as Mr. Surrett not being truthful and accurate in his reports and allowing his HC inspectors to put information up like this would raise some serious doubt to his his testimony, his truth and veracity and testimony in court. Um, so once again, if, if that's going to happen, please contact me. This is Stephen Daniels with DUI and Consultants, and please check back for some more videos. I'm going to start posting a lot more of these videos.